just let us rejoice and be glad that we're in it. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that online people are watching us. And God loves you, so do we. Give your neighbor a hug and tell me you're glad. I'm so happy. We've got Charlie's here. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here, Charlie. Yes, I'm glad you're here. Thank you all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. comes from the source to fill us so that we may take it and fill those people we need through it. Yeah. Okay, everybody be seated. Well, that was a pretty sad thing in New Westminster, right? Part of our history is gone. And uh, I had to go down and take a look because I used to work in the Hamlin building uh, with a doctor's office. And if anybody knows New Westminster, at one time, uh, for you younger people, you'd remember that Miller's was there, but before Miller's was there, it was, uh, yeah, it was a go back a long way, and it was uh, an arcade kind of hallway, and the kind of camera people that used to take the pictures on the street were in the building, and uh, Dr. DeFew, who I worked for, and it just was so wonderful. So we've got cops on the corner where my husband bought his shoes for years and years and years. Only place he could get six by e. Otherwise, he has to take a size seven because he can't get the width. You see, so he would always buy his shoes there. And the next building, of course, the Royal City Cafe. Anybody that uh, was there for a long time remember the Royal City Cafe. They used to have a reader in the Royal City Cafe called Mrs. Martin. Does anybody go back that far? Mrs. Martin was one of the best. Uh, readers that you could go and get your teacup and cards read and she was absolutely dead on and uh, Royal City was there from the time I was a girl and then next to Royal City was a uh, paint shop and part of the arcade and then the other side was the shoe shop and the entrance to the arcade and then all of that's gone right over to where the shoes come from and uh, the one corner completely flat right down to the front street and the street uh, halfway back into past where my office was and where Canada the camera was is where it's turned down in the Hamilton mm -hmm. Arcade. So it was a piece of history and a very sad thing for the people, but we do thank God for no loss of limb or life because those firefighters went in there and it was pretty dangerous. It was pretty dangerous and they did keep everything okay. So we thank God for that. That's a Thanksgiving. For us, thank you that it wasn't worse. It could have been mm -hmm. so much worse. And people could have been hurt. Those firefighters may have been in that building when the explosion went on. And uh, so we have to be thankful for that. And on the rostrum with me today is Charlie Seaman. And uh, this was kind of a surprise to Charlie. He didn't know he was talking this morning. <laughs> and um, this Thanksgiving kind of threw everybody. Our speaker had. 27 people coming for dinner. And then Ramona had some uh, family situation come up, so she couldn't be here. So we've got Charlie and we've got me. So there you go. So Charlie, we're going to uh, introduce you in a few minutes, but we're going to sing number 45, It Is No Secret. And of course, Celia is going to make us sound fabulous. It's not the one I expected. Oh, I must have wrote down the wrong number, Celia. I did. Poor Celia, I give her the list and then I uh, put down the
cha-cha bee, too. Yeah, hey. You know, this may be more Protestant than what we know. Have a seat, everybody. Um, that song, if you remember, Celia, you'll remember that it was actually on the hip parade. No, I don't. Do, you don't remember that? No. You're too young. That's why. <laughs> but in Canada, it was on the hip parade for many, and in the States for many, many weeks. And um, it was at the time that I was working in that doctor's office, and Dr. DeVue, I'd like to say to you, if you influenced us to put the wrong songs in, we got your, it was no secret for you, so that was wonderful. And Charlie, how would you like to come up and just give a good word to everybody? Give them a hand. Thank you, good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Charlie. And I'm happy to be here. Fortunately, we had Thanksgiving at my house yesterday, and we had a lucky 13 people at the dinner. Cooking done by yours truly. And I must say, it was very, very good. Many years I've been doing it, many years I've enjoyed putting things together and creating with my hands and with my with my brain. So what I want to do first is I want to do a small reading that was given to me by a medium named Fiona Stewart Williams of Belfast, Northern Ireland. And she had me do this reading as part of a course that I'm doing for the Spiritualist National Union for the platform accreditation screen scheme. And the classes are at two thirty in the morning, our time. So I was not expecting to be doing a reading and philosophy at that hour, but there it was, and there's a very interesting twist to this at the end. So to start with the reading, it's called The Dance, written by a lady named Oriah Mountain Dancer. The Dance. I have sent you my invitation, the note inscribed in the palm of my hand by the fire of living. Don't jump and shout. Yes, this is what I want. Let's do it. Just stand up quietly and dance with me. Show me how you follow your deepest desires, spiraling down into the ache within the ache, and I will show you how much I reach inward and open outward to feel the kiss of the mystery, sweet lips on my own, every day. Don't tell me you want to hold the whole world in your heart. Show me how you turn away from making another wrong without abandoning yourself when you're hurt and afraid of being unloved. Tell me a story of who you are and see who I am in the stories I am living. Together, we will remember that each of us always has a choice. Don't tell me how wonderful things will be someday. Show me you can risk being completely at peace completely, truly okay with the way things are right now in this moment, and again, the next, and the next, and the next. I have heard enough warrior stories of heroic daring. Tell me how you crumble when you hit the wall, the place where you cannot go beyond by the strength of your own will. What carries you to the other side of that wall, to the fragile beauty of your own humanness? And after we have shown each other how we have set and kept the clear, healthy boundaries that help us live side by side with each other, let us risk something that we never stop silently loving those we once loved out loud. Take me to the places on the earth that teach you how to dance, the places where you can risk letting the world break your heart. And I will take you to the places where the earth beneath my feet and the stars overhead make my heart whole again and again. Show me how you take care of business without letting business determine who you are. When the children that are fed but still the voices within and around us show that soul's desires have too high a price, let us remind each other that it's never about the money. Show me how you offer to your people and the world the stories and the songs that you want your children's children to remember. And I will show you how I struggle not to change the world, but to love it. 
sit beside me in the long moments of shared solitude, knowing both our absolute aloneness and our undeniable belonging. Dance with me in the silence and the sound of small daily words, holding neither against me at the end of the day. When the sound of all the declarations of our sincerest intentions has died away on the wind, dance with me in the infinite pause before the next great inhale of the breath that was breathing us all into being, not filling emptiness from the outside or from within. Don't say yes, just take my hand and dance with me. For I am not a dancer. Now what Fiona didn't know that night was three things. She didn't know that my middle name was Stuart, which is also her middle name. She didn't know that when she picked out this reading, and Fiona is from Northern Ireland, never been to Canada, she didn't know that Orion Mountain Dancer and I were both born in Ontario. She didn't know that I was born in Toronto, where Orion Mountain Dancer lives now. And she didn't know that Orion Mountain Dancer went to Ryerson University in Toronto, as did I, about, as it turns out, two years apart back in the early 1970s. So here's a lady on inspiration from Northern Ireland, 1, 10.30 in the morning her time, 2.30 a.m. to some guy on the internet in Vancouver, She's picking out a reading for him to do a philosophy to rest on. And all the interconnectedness of the soul of the work that we're trying to do. And in this reading, when we talk about the dance, we're talking about the dance of life, the dance of humanness, where we decide that we're going to integrate ourselves with the world. And constantly, we're trying to have big dreams, have big hopes and desires, which of course get bumped all the time by other people. People that we love, people that we don't love, people that we once loved, become part of our human experience, and they become part of ourselves as we grow up and we grow forward. Spiritualism brings a principle that says very strongly there's progress open to every human soul. And in this dance of life, we have to balance what we, what we want with who we really are. And who we really are is not necessarily what we want to be. We want to, of course, be happy. But what is happiness? Happiness to you may be something totally different than what happiness is to me, and how you go about achieving it may be totally different than I would do that for my own goals and my own aspirations of my human soul in that dance. And we have to remember that we are all people. In the Brotherhood of Man, we so often say to ourselves, well, we are spiritualists, so we don't really care much for those other religions because we didn't understand their books. But that's not to put down other religions. Or we might look at a disaster on the other side of the world. We may look at a suicide bombing in Baghdad, or a drone attack in Pakistan, or the Huawei. It's not really news to us because it really didn't happen to us. But it happened to humanity. If it had happened in New York City, or if it does happen in New York City, or Vancouver, we'll all be deeply affected. But because those people on the other side are unknown to us, we may not really care that much if we think about our humanity. Certainly if we saw the scenes on the television of blood and body parts all over the ground, we would be horrified. But we have to remember that these people were human too. Because they have believed differently than we do, it doesn't make it right. And 
until man accepts the idea in his heart that all humanity has the right to live. All humanity has the right to be fed and watered and to be disease free wherever possible. Will man ever really move himself forward? We do so spiritually when we say, I'm going to do the best I can for my soul. And I'm going to do the best I can for all of the people around me. Those that I love. And that's what we are supposed to do. But we need to reach out across our connected world. Like Fiona reached out to me when she gave me that reading and said, here, try this philosophy and see what sort of sense it makes to you. And we have to stop thinking small, just about ourselves, just about our families. And we have to reach out with our heart, our mind, our soul, and be that connectivity that we hope to be. And if we don't get it right the first time, or the second time, or the third time, that's fine. Because we are trying to make the progress. We are trying to improve that part of the world that we can have a direct effect on. And in the dance, when we see our children growing up, last night when we had Thanksgiving dinner at my house, all of the children that were there are now young adults. And all of the children that were there have partners. And I look at that thinking, God, I'm glad I waited until I was 40 before I had kids. Mm -hmm. Because now I can accept that they have their life to live. They have their needs, their desires, no different than I was when I was in my early 20s. And I wish for them perfect happiness, as I would wish for myself, as I would wish for all of you, as I would wish for the Taliban in Pakistan, that they find what they need to ensure life. Never expecting that everyone is going to agree with me, think like I do, act like I do. Of course not. Because we are that diverse humanity. We are all individual souls, but we are all part of the great cosmos of the universe. And in that great cosmos, many things appear to be not perfect, but everything does have order. There are processes of the cosmic universe that we do not understand, that we will only see when we come back and we are simply spirit again. And in a spiritualist way of life, what we like to try to do is we try to reach out to our own spirit, our own soul, and say, what do I really want to get out of this? Do I want money? Do I want fame? Do I want a house? Do I want a husband, a wife, and children? Do I want a nicer car? Or do I want to go into that place of me that says, this is who I am. This is what I am. This is what I want to be. And how can I make my heart go? to the highest possible level of love that I can have for myself. And that's not a selfish desire. That's a desire that says, I want to make that spirit whole. I want to be able to take away all of those hurts and pains that were given to me by others as they pursued their own soul. I have to let go of all of the things that did not work for me. I have to let go of those hurts where I felt that I was wrong, but funny enough, the other person thought they were right. We can learn from our greatest mistakes. We can learn from our greatest pains about who and what we are as human beings and as souls. Progress open to every soul in the dance of life. Thank you. Great. Mm -hmm. And the beginning.
beginning when you're said talking about the lady asking you this and not knowing the other things. Mm -hmm. We call that goddesses. That's not coincidence, is it? No, it's all one plan. So we'd like to thank you, Charlie. That was really great, and especially that we had to drag you in the last minute. Imagine what you would have had if you had time to plan. I suppose. <laughs> Sometimes it's better when it's, it just comes from the heart. Right? Okay, we are a healing in, uh, ministry, and we do have an area in the back that if you care to have hands-on healing, there is uh, an area there, and our facilitators will assist you. Otherwise, if you'd like to just sit and just absorb the beautiful healing uh, energies, and then uh, just let your mind drift and go with the conversation on the meditation, and I'm sure that everybody will enjoy this. to 
draw through everyone to facilitate the healing. Taking a deep breath now, think about outside of this room, into the community, of your family, the community around you, of your teachers and your leaders. And allow that energy to ripple out and touch all of them so that they too may experience the wonderful healing, the wonderful peace. Allow that energy now to go forward into the world and not only touch the world's leaders, but to touch the animals, the vegetation, the waters, the atmosphere, so that they may be healed. And let us be thankful to the animals and the vegetation and the minerals that give of themselves and serve us so greatly and feed us so well. us now to reach out into the universe, into other parts of the universe that we are not familiar with, for many mansions in God's world that we are not aware of every room and every mansion. But we send love and we send caring, for God promises us that love and healing is never ending. And all we need to do is ask. And the energy will follow the intention of the thought. And the healing will begin. Now as we circle back to the seat of the soul, take a few moments just to sit quietly before you come back to your everyday workaday world to enjoy the tranquility and the peace of the healing area of your garden, the inner garden of healing. And know that you may visit here at any time and God has promised the love and the healing is never ending. So open your hearts, your mind, and your hand. God bless you, and he sends his angels to keep after you. Thank the facilitators from both sides, both the spirit side and our everyday work in the world that are sending healing each day. We have a bowl that you may add for absentee healing. And if you have someone who is in need of healing, you put their name, first name only, in the bowl. And then the healing facilitators will pray every day for them and help them with their own healing so they may draw that extra energy from the source. Thank you everybody and we'll just 
now I'll go to the part of the Karen share. And my met, Kathy, is going to come up here and Karen share a little bit about what's going on with her. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I was here a couple of weeks ago on September 29th talking about dream a new dream. Um, and, you know, imagine this, imagine that. And uh, a couple of Fridays ago, I've I been at my company for three years, never had a raise. And I really give this company my all. And I really love my job there. They went through a change of a new owner, and I was, anytime anybody did it, was any talk going on about the company and the new owner, I'd try not to stay in it, or I'd, I'd always just keep, try to keep morale up, and I'd just keep going on about my job. And when I was up here a couple of weeks ago, and he says, you know, my job is going good, my home life is going good, everything's going good, you know? Uh, so I, on Friday, I asked for a raise, you know, and I, I, I gave my, the new owner a list of my credentials, and my acknowledged talents, and he says, well, who acknowledged these talents? I says, I did. <laughs> he says, okay. <laughs> and uh, so he says, well, he, you know, he keeps on bringing up that he wanted me to work, start later, work later hours, and I, I knew that if I did that, it would take a, away from my level of happiness, because my hour, I have an hour drive to work every day on the way back, on the way there, and so it's 11 hours already, and um, so I kept on standing up for what I believed in, in that and I told him that if there's any special projects that you would be needing to stay late, I would do that. You know, I just don't want to do it every day. But uh, I says, but either way, when I'm here, I'll give it my all all the time. He says, well, he says, I need uh, the weekend to think about it. He says, you can spend the weekend thinking about whether or not I'm going to say yes or not. And I says, well, you know, I think maybe I'll just kind of do some creative visualization and say, see you saying yes. <laughs> and he says, Okay, <laughs> and uh, so the meeting was over, and I thought it went really well. Actually, I left that meeting feeling pretty perky, and like, well, wow, this went well, you know. I, oh, I like to maybe, maybe I'll get, maybe I won't get as much as I asked for, but maybe I'll get half or negotiate something, you know. So I went home and I started that evening thinking about, you know, seeing the taste, saying, yes, Kathy, we're going to give you that, and yes, yes, you know, you, you really bring a lot to the company. And, Something kind of switched to me through the night, but between Friday and Saturday, and my mind started telling me, saying, you know what, Kathy? Instead of seeing, seeing that, Mitch saying, you know, the, that, see, just see yourself saying yes to whatever he says to you, no matter what it is. Yes, if it's like a thousand dollar raise or uh, 50 cents or an hour raise, no matter what it is, just say yes, be appreciative, whatever he says. So I started seeing that, seeing that through all through the rest of Saturday, all through Sunday, and Sunday night I just went to sleep, and Sunday morning I woke up. Monday I went to work, and he was too busy to see me all day, and I said, well, oh, that's good news. Uh, he made people appreciate that I didn't bug him or anything like that, you know, like, we're going to have that meeting, you know, I just left it alone, and Tuesday comes along, he was there bright and early as I was, 6.30 and 6.40, he said, Kathy, you ready to have that meeting? I says, I sure am. <laughs> and um, so I went in his office and I sat down and he says, um, Kathy, he says, um, you're not going to like what I have to say. I says, oh? He says, yeah, he says, I got your final check here. I go, oh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, it wasn't, I thought I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> he says, uh, yeah, he says, you know, as you know, I'm the new owner of the company and, um, uh, We've been doing a lot of restructuring, and we brought in the sales manager and new sales manager, and and uh, you know, and um, we need somebody by his side while he's there, and we aren't able to do that, so to speak. And I said, and he says that, and uh, going forward, uh, this you know, having this meeting, just kind of put it in advance, works what I would, we were going to be doing anyway, and whatever. And he says, uh, well, you know, yeah, yeah, this is your. You know, we're we'll letting you go. Here's your right final check. And he says, we get an extra week service pay. And I said, oh boy. I says, well, I, this is a real shock. I says, I thought I was really well liked here and, and well appreciated what I brought to the company. And he says, well, that's what makes this so hard because you are. Uh, he says, but uh, it's just it's just not fitting. It's not fitting anymore. And I says, 
okay, well, that's what you want. I said, so today is my last day. And he says, yeah. And as my eyes is filling up with water a little bit, there's a little part of me that said, yes. And then, there's a, and then I said, so you want me to leave right now? And as my eyes fill up with a little bit more water, he says, yes. I says, yes, a little part of me. And I thought, wow, what? You know, this is weird. Up here in my eyes, I'm welling up in here. I'm feeling like, yes, you know. <laughs> and so I, I go to my desk and I start packing up everything out my recycle bin and use that. Because I, I usually uh, personalize my space quite a bit. I had seven plants there and pictures of my family. And so I, it took about three trips to take away my car. And as I'm leaving the building, uh, one of my friends and co-workers said, oh, you're going home early today. And I, you know, going home already? And I said, well, actually, yes, I am for good. She goes, what? And I says, yeah, and we had a little cry together. She helped me bring my stuff to the car. But as I'm walking in the car with my first stuff, I see my bumper sticker says, T-G-F-E-D, and I says, well, Kathy, are you thankful today? <laughs> are you thankful for this day? And I says, you bet I am. You bet I am, girl. I'm really thankful for this day. <laughs> and, when I, and so that's what I said to him. When, I, when he told me that I was gone today, I stood up and I put my hand up and I said, thank you very much. <laughs> and he goes, and I think he was a little shocked by that, you know, response because I had a smile on my face, a little tear in my eyes, but I thanked him for letting me go. <laughs> and um, as the day went on, I, I was able to stand back and I was uh, able to, you know, observe how I helped manifest this. And and I started realizing that in the past three weeks, I started bringing stuff home, <laughs> just little stuff, like a little ruler that I had had from my company from way back. And, and stuff like that, and I start feeling like this job was a little bit in the way of my dreams because I, I really want to make a living helping people. And uh, so I was, and I'm, and I'm visualizing this. I, I'm seeing my I'm going to sleep, falling asleep with my imaginary uh, imagery um, meditation, and I see me on a platform like this, and you know, there's a bunch of people out there, and I'm talking and everything like that. So I'm, I'm just visualizing this, and so I have a plan, and, and I want to, you know, become a reverend, more for like reverend, and. And uh, I'm thinking, like, I want to be a counselor or something like that. And I'm kind of thinking how I could see happening. I started studying that, well, I'll start saving money and I'm going back to school. Or, so I'm 11 hours at work and then go in the evening, come home, cook dinner with me and my husband, and then go home to school. Well, what I'm kind of thinking now is that my higher self sees a better way, that that's not the best way for me to achieve my goals, that maybe the best way is that I got let go from this job. They gave me severance pay. They're going to let me go in the most favorable way possible with uh, the record of employment, so I'm collecting eye. I hear there's retraining programs, and there's different programs out there that I can maybe apply for, and, then, and I can get that retraining. I'm not sure still how all is going to work out. I just keep on seeing the, the end, and I, I went to the, I had a friend that uh, she, she sent me this article of this woman that did this. She, she uh, worked in the hospitality industry. Her name is Tara. And um, Wolf, and she went through a depression through an illness that she had, and and she found the right tools to get out of that depression, and she got the right tools in her tool bag to get a healthy tool bag, and uh, and now she's working for the Mental Health Association in Langley, and I thought, wow, that's cool. She did what I want to do. She did career change. She took what she learned, and she's helping people now. And uh, so there was this mental health week going on, and there was a this blues thing's going on there, fighting the blues or something, beyond the blues. And I, I told my husband, like, just five minutes <laughs> before I was about to leave, I said, I'm going to this thing. I feel like I really have to need to go there. So I went there, and I didn't really even have a title of what I'm, I'm, I'm so green at the, where I'm at in, my, in this dream, that I didn't even have a title where I wanted to be, but the first person I talked to, there, Renee, she says, well, it sounds like to me like you want to be a mental health service worker. And I said, wow, great. Give me a title, you know. So that came out of it. And then this other woman when I talked to, um, she said, she said, well, make sure you talk to other people in the field, so that way you can find out what college or court plan to follow that has the most respect. That, that, that you say, if you went to this college, that they're going to get more respect than if you went to maybe this other one to get the program. So it's a two-year program that you need to go through. And I said, wow, great, more information. So I mean, things are working out. In, in, the dream is just changing. Like Barbara gave me the new CD, well, the CD that we have, God has a new dream. And that's what I'm living. I'm just thinking that all this is happening for the best. And I have one friend that she said to me, says, well, good that you're keeping a positive attitude. And I wrote to her back, I says, 
Well, I can't do anything else. Anything else would be a waste of my time and my energy. So that's why I'm, I'm trying, you know, I'm, I can't afford the luxury of a negative thought right now. I can't afford to go and let myself wallow in pain or sorrow or feeling sorry for myself because that's not going to be productive in any way, shape, or form. So I keep my mind thinking, okay, what can I do with this? So I've already applied for Eli, I've been with one of the ladies and that's really good, and then I met Tara Wolf. And she said she's going to meet with me. She's going to tell me her story. And I'm going to call some of the counselors that I went through to tell and see what they can suggest. And um, I'm, I'm on my way to a new dream, and you guys will be able to see, see it on, on the polls in the next two to five years. <laughs> and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. See, you guys making lemonade out of lemons, eh? That's right, lemon zest. Right. We have nice lemonade now. How wonderful is that? And that's what the Care and Share is about, is that you're able to come up here and share how you've got through the tough times. As does Dr. Shuva says, tough times never last, just tough people do though. Yeah. So you're going to be fine, Kathy. I actually can see this is going to be a benefit for you. And uh, I have a lot since you called me and told me about it. So that's really great. Um, so now we're going to go into the announcement. So first of all, we're going to ask about birthdays, and I think somebody on the rostrum here had a birthday just passed. Did you not? No. <laughs> Was it anniversary or when you were 39? Okay. Okay, and the rest of you, happy birthday. night so if everybody would like to come to that it starts at seven goes to nine uh, we are making some changes due to the fact that there is so a cost of heating um, this place we have to come in a day early to turn the heat on like right today it wasn't bad because it, it was cold when we came in but it heated up quickly but as the winter comes in we have to come in on two, on Wednesday to heat it for Thursday and if only two or three people turn out, it's pretty expensive. So we are changing. Um, the one thing that uh, I admit there, Kathy didn't mention is that she's starting a class of people. How many people here have ever read the four agreements or been involved with that? Uh, we're going to have a little group after church on the second Sunday of the month, and that will be for what, an hour and a half, maybe, after chapel, and everybody just kind of give their, you know, kind of inputs, kind of like a little book club, uh, that you'll get a chance to do some sharing and yeah, input on, on that, right? Yeah, learn how to apply it. And learn how to apply it in your life. Mm -hmm. so, uh, whoa. <laughs> uh, and so we're Anyway, the, the, uh, Kathy's going to facilitate that, and the first one will be the second uh, Sunday. And of course, next Sunday we have the um, uh, meditation, or not meditation, the message circle after service. So what we're doing is doing Sunday afternoon when we're already heated. And then if, uh, for instance, I want to put a workshop on on a Saturday, or maybe uh, Janet Helm's going to come in and do a workshop, we can put the workshops on Saturday and then just warm it for Saturday and Sunday. 
and it will cut the bills down. Because uh, even with doing uh, very little heating, it costs us three or four hundred dollars a month through the winter months just for the little bit of heating that we were doing. So cut down the expenses and uh, keep the job going. And other than that, I guess um, uh, my husband's birthday will be next week, oh, next mm -hmm. Sunday. And so I, I will be here, but I probably will not stay for the circle. So I will see if I can get some volunteers that want to work with uh, the circle and do messages on that day. Okay, and so now we would like to wait upon your offering, please. And we will sing number uh, 21, Garden of Life. <laughs> to be sad, bitter, angry, worry about the mundane parts of life, how to pay the bills, how to put food on the table. Those are all concerns, but it is our attitude that shapes our life, that leads us forward. It's our lack of attitude and our bad attitude that holds us back in the places where we really don't want to be. So congratulations to you for thinking like that and knowing that you can make a difference in your own life. And it's work, but you've already laid out your plan. Your Yellow Brook Road is already in front of you, and all you've got to do is take the next step. And you determine. You determine that next step rather than the knocks of life. That's what's so important about knowing the human spirit. That we know how to do these things if we would just stop and reach into ourselves and say, I want to find that lily in the heart. I want to find the goodness. I want to find what's right for me. And let that little bit of ourselves not be selfish, but to know that we can make that lily blossom and make it grow and make it grow stronger every day by not simply having an attitude that says, oh, well, it's all going to work out and not do any work for it. Life is hard and life is a struggle and it only gets easier when we can see in front of us where we want to try to get to. And as long as we maintain that semblance of moving ourselves forward, we will. 
The lady in the back, the one with the one here. I think I used to, I knew your name at one point, but Peggy. I can't. Peggy? Peggy. Peggy, sorry. My hair is not so good. Um, I want to, I'm not sure who's bringing me this information yet, but I want to talk to you about your fascination with the spirit. And your fascination with how mediumship works. And I know that you have these thoughts in your mind and you wonder where they come from about yourself appearing in that kind of a role. Do you understand what I'm saying? I hear you. I, I don't think I've spent much time on mediumship. Okay. I'm told that you are fascinated by the human spirit, the human soul, and finding that part of yourself. Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay. As is probably everybody in the room. But I'm also told that you have some abilities that you haven't recognized yet to put yourself on that path, and that there is a time in your life when you might actually consider sitting for spirit and learning that aspect of yourself. Are you aware of that? No. No? Okay. <laughs> then we'll just have to make you aware of that. <laughs> All right? And as I'm talking about this, I have a really lovely grandmother coming in. It feels like a grandmother on the mother's side of the family. And I know that this woman, she comes in, she she comes in, she, she floats like a butterfly as she comes into the room. She has this wonderful, light, airy personality. Do you understand who I'm talking about? I never knew her. You never knew her? Okay. This makes it even more difficult. Okay, this, this woman... She, she gives me the year 1956 as being important. No. That's not, you could probably have to take that away and check that out somewhere else. Mm -hmm. This is before your time. And on mother's side of the family, she's showing me a house with a very large backyard garden. Are you aware of any of that circumstance of your grandmother? And, and is that, you, you don't know her, I'm not. I don't know her. You don't know her at all. Okay. See if we can get something from her, but she does know. Hmm. <coughs> she quite simply says, I just want her to know you that you're here. That she's here. And that Within the next six months, you'll become much more aware of who she was. So I'm going to have to leave that with you because I, I want to spend a lot of time with it. Sure, thank you. I'm just kind of like, and let's come to you. I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. Me? Wanda. Yes. Wanda. Wanda, yes. I should have known her name. It's funny when we get into these states that names seem to disappear. Earlier, there was a woman with, with you who also feels a grandmother. And this woman's skin coloring was very similar to yours. Okay. Okay. As in yes or no? Uh, oh, um, I don't. I wouldn't know anybody. Uh, and a grandmother, like my dad's mom was dead <coughs> when I was born, so I wouldn't know. Interesting that we get two in a room like this. And have you ever seen a picture of your grandmother? Never. Never. Okay, I want to give you a woman who was built very much the way you were, and I want to say that she passed somewhere around the age of 60. Okay. Is that, would that be correct, or do you have any idea? No, <coughs> Okay. Okay. It's very difficult to give messages from people where we have no, no clue about the relationship between the two of you. But I know that this woman's personality was very, very much like yours. I want to give you a personality that was outgoing, upbeat, very accepting of who she was and what she was in life. Also a woman who 
saw her challenges. And I may be describing you as I'm describing her. I feel that this woman was very, very much in the way of acceptance of limitations that she has in life, but acceptance that she can move that forward. She never gives up the idea that her human soul could move forward. And at the same time being bound by the conventions of the life that she was put in by all of those people around her. Is that making any sense to you? Yes. Okay. And she's here in tremendous support of of you and what she's indicating to me was that she wants to see you back re-educating yourself. You can move yourself higher. You can move yourself further. But you've got to have the confidence. You've got to take the time and the effort to move yourself into the field of life that you want to be in. Because I don't feel like you're really doing what you want right now. That'd be correct. Yeah. Okay. And just know that she's going to be there to help you. She will be the ruffle, the, the breeze in the curtain. I'll put it that way. When you see those curtains moving on their own at home, that'll be her. Talk to her. I know you've seen them moving already. Okay. Yes. Yes, you have seen them. Okay. I'll leave that part for you. Are there a couple? Ah, yeah. I'll go. go ahead. I'm, I'm loud now, so I probably won't have to use the mic for this part. I don't think we're on tape any longer anyway. <coughs> but I'd like to come to Doris. Okay. I'm just standing there watching you, Doris, and thinking, I should have had you at my house for supper last night. Please, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had three really good looking guys to choose from. Oh, oh man. And, and they took my daughter to the hockey game. So. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I still am picking up that mm -hmm. there is a new relationship coming in for you. Okay. So um, because I was picking up like Oktoberfest, but yes. you were already That's over right. earlier right. than that, right. I felt that it was probably from Germany. But I'm right. kind of feeling. Like that there's something going on here. Now, have you 